Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to this, depending on wherever you may live or however you choose to read your clock, middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this early morning or middle of the night bonus upload, shall we? Today's first Pennsylvania subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, I'm a big fan of your show and so is my wife. I just wanted to share with you a couple of my encounters with both Bigfoot and Dogman. So get ready for a long read. First off, I don't get out and try and find these things. Just weird stuff happens to be attracted to me for some reason. I'm going to start with my Dogman encounters. It all happened on my family's farm in one of the many small, technically, villages of Clearfield County, PA. The first being, while a friend and I were camping in the side yard, we heard this howl-slash-scream that sounded like a cross between coyote howl, while another is being thrown into a wood chipper. Then the second happened a year or two later, while I was shooting groundhog in the side field. I looked up across it, and the old pasture to the tree line, and in this clear spot, about 10 meters into the trees, about 350 to 400 meters from me, there was this large black, about four foot, to the shoulders on all fours with a slightly sloped back and some fluff around the neck dog. It sat there looking at me, and I knew I could hit it, but something in my head told me not to. Then, on the third one, this happened on September 2015. I was just sitting there by a fire in my backyard having a couple of rum and cokes relaxing and had one of those buzzes where you feel warm and fuzzy but not where you're too warm and fuzzy and pissing every few minutes. When I noticed that everything was off, giving a quick glance around I noticed a new mass to my left. Behind a fallen pine tree about 15 meters away I did not make eye contact, but I kept it in the corner of my eye and worked reaching over to grab my shotgun. It was like a half a moon, so I got some details out of it, but not too many because it was right outside of the firelight beside the occasional flicker. It was about seven to eight foot tall, again with some fluff to the neck, about three feet across the shoulders, not really that jacked, looking like people's drawings depict, so a bit more natural had the face similar to a Malamute. I couldn't get a good look at the hands because of the trees. But it was standing there watching me. I'm guessing it was either curious or it was waiting to mess with me. I put my shotgun across my lap, pointing it in its general direction, so I think it may have gotten the point. After a couple of minutes, I had to add more wood to the fire. But by the time I sat back down, it was gone. These damn things are sneaky. Anyhow, on to my Bigfoot. I'm now in a different part of Pennsylvania, and as I said earlier, weird stuff is attracted to me. So the first time I'm up here, I'm going down the back road from Walmart, and as most people do, I'm looking out at the fields for deer. Well, going by this one field, I look out and see a figure walking in the woods across this 100 and 150 meter wide field. At first, didn't think anything of it. It's a guy scouting or setting up for archery season. But continuing to look, notice that one, 
It's too tall to be a person. And two, people don't walk like that unless they're a gobbler. Me being who I am, lose it like a fat kid in McDonald's. My dipship self didn't think to tell my wife to pull over or use my handy little thing in my hand to take a picture. The second was opening day during rifle season, and we just got to this top of this hill, walking logging trails, and I look and see movement by this one tree maybe 50 meters away, and looking even harder to see the head pop out. I get my wife's attention to show her, and she sees it as well. Didn't want to take the shot because it wasn't bothering us, so we just continued on our way and let it be. Well, a day or two later, we get off of work and decide to use that time to hunt. We get out there, load up, start walking. We take a different road that leads to a dead end, and the smell of wet dog and skunk hits us like an elevator ride with Ray Rice. Thinking there may be another in the area, we cut up the hill. While walking up to see a print that is not a double print from a bear, this print is a couple inches bigger than my 11 and a half boot, and a bit wider at the wide part of your foot. We stop to look, then continue on our way. We get to the top, about where we saw the one the other day prior, and spook a couple. We walk in that way. They went, thinking that there may be a buck nearby. Start hearing movement above us. We stopped waiting and listening. When that smell came back, but worse, like Sharknado 2. Well, then we got growled at. Our opinions were to slide down the slope in front of us or walk by where we came, where there was a bunch of brush, where this growl had come from. I slid down first, then had to convince my wife, who didn't realize the seriousness. When she finally got to where I was, only then did it kick in when I pointed to one standing beside the tree and another by this oil pump we were at. After making a half mile walk to the car, seeing them pop in and out of cover, we made it to the car. I had her unload first, then myself, because I had the heavier hit and gun. Well, as she was getting in the car, the big one is peeking over the fuel tank, and I'm watching another two in the trees across from me. She finally gets in, and I quickly unload, jump in, and in true cliche, can't find the keys. Well, finally, find him, start up, and get the wipers going to get the snow off. I can't see anything trying to back up, and all of a sudden, the back passenger door pops open. I'm now slamming the car in gear, looking out a four-inch wide hole in the snow as the windshield wipers are going as fast as they can. I didn't get out too close to the door back up until the, down the road, but there you have it. There's my encounters. Same sub, second email. Several months ago, I sent you my encounters, but prim primarily highlighted on the Bigfoot ones, and with your video last week about the Central Pennsylvania encounter got me thinking about my Dogman ones that I didn't cover as much on. Well, first off, I've got bad luck when it comes to these things. Either we've built up so much and they're being pushed out. I just don't know. I'm not an expert. But just to give you a heads up, there are some no-no words in here and some jokes. i got a bit of a sense of humor. But let's get started. All these encounters happen in central P Pennsylvania in Clearfield County. And after the third is when I started doing a bit of research into the happenings in Pennsylvania and found out about ones that have happened in towns I've passed through many times, such as Hollidaysburg and Penfield, along with one that I could stand in my front yard and say, just on the other side of that hill. Like some of the roads up here got paved. In my mom's lifetime, I'm in my 20s, well, some of the are still dirt. We're up here in the mountains. But it got started a few years ago. I was camping in my yard with my friend, and this god-awful howl comes about a thousand meters from us into the tree line. Best way to describe it is a woman screaming bloody murder as a coyote is thrown into a wood chipper. So I'm crapping bricks, and my friend may have his pants as well trying to figure out what was going on when it decides to go off again. 
At this point, he grabs his pistol. He had a Ruger 22, and I grabbed my 9 because worst case, it comes to our tent. And my friend makes it upset with his pea shooter. And I have, and I know have to shoot my friend in the leg so I can get away. Like with bears, you don't have to be the fastest, just faster than the slowest guy. But I didn't have to sacrifice my friend so I'd live. Don't judge me. I just have better survival instincts. But anyway, that's just about it for that one. Now on to the second. This happened a couple years later, same location. I was just sitting there shooting at some groundhogs as they pop up out of their holes in the side yard. When I looked up into the tree line, about 300 meters out, and noticed a large black dog that stood about as high as a deer just standing there looking at me. Now, this wouldn't have been a hard shoot for me, as I've done it before hunting and in some competitions, but it just gave off this vibe, don't mess with me, and I won't mess with you. So, I let it be, and then it walked off. But still at a distance, I could tell it definitely was not a regular dog. And there are no wolves up here. Then the last being in 2016, when I was hanging out by the fire late at night after my parents went in. Well, as many fires go, I had a couple of drinks in me, just enough to feel warm, not enough to see stuff that people think that happens when you tell them a encounter like this. When I noticed that things weren't exactly right, as in quiet enough to hear a squirrel fart. I noticed out of the corner of my eye something that wasn't there a few moments before standing behind the tree that had fallen and we were cutting up for wood. Well, being full of piss and vinegar, along with the confidence from my friend Captain Morgan, I decided that the best course of action was for me to add some more wood and grab my shotgun. Well, completed those tasks because, hey, let's see what this creature is instead of doing something rational like going in was the thing to do gave me a decent look well I sat down and was just looking out of the corner of my eye to not let on that I knew it was there and yeah let me tell you I didn't see anything that looked like it could have its way with me and then ripped me apart like that till I moved in with my wife and left the toilet seat up. It was just standing there looking at me because I guess it was curious as to who I was. But to give a good description, besides it was tall, hairy, and pretty creepy looking, would be eight feet tall, had some fluff around its neck, yellowish amber eye shine, built but not freakishly big, more of a toned build that fit so about two, two and a half feet across, had the head like a Malamute or a German Shepherd. Didn't get a good look at the mid-torso due to the tree, thankfully, because that tree was like a bit of an obstacle, and I didn't want to cry myself to sleep if I saw its man parts. But that lasted probably a few minutes. I went to put the wood on the fire and was out of my sight for a couple of seconds. By the time I was able to look back in the general direction, it was gone which was relaxing but butt-puckering moment because it was gone, but at the same time, it was quiet about leaving and I didn't know where it had gone. I started to hear the bugs again. Tonight's second Pennsylvania subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, I'm exactly that Pennsylvania Dutch, German, and Shawnee Indian. I find that pretty peculiar. It's pretty interesting, they bring up the Mason-Dixie line, the border between Pennsylvania and Maryland, and that's exactly where I grew up, Delta, Pennsylvania. If you look up that Delta, Pennsylvania, it's literally right on the line. It's all woods and farmland, creeks, a large river, the Susquehanna. I oddly always felt attached somehow to wolves and had an encounter when I was 13 years old. The dogman was watching my identical twin sister, our friend, and myself through the window. My mom heard something weird outside, so she ran into the house full speed, approximately 9 p.m. 
She was in the middle of taking our laundry off the line out back when she said it sounded like a huge oil drum was hit with something. It made a big thud. It wasn't the fluctuation oil drums and silos do due to climate change or temperature drops and rises. It was as if something hit it hard. The next door neighbor bred and slaughtered steer. He had feeding silos in his yard and that's what I believe it hit. She yelled to pull shut all the windows and she grabbed some weapons and to close and lock the windows and take the window fans out. My twin ripped out the window fan from our mom's bedroom and when she did this we saw a huge black furry creature standing staring right at us just on the other side of the window screen. All we could see was the top of this thing's shoulders, an enormous head, snout, and ears. I don't remember seeing glowing eyes, but I know they were huge, black. They reminded me of horses' eyes. What freaked me out was how it was swaying side to side. To me, it was like he or she was trying to get a better view of us or take in what it was seeing. While me and my sister were shutting the windows, my mom grabbed her pistol and some knives at the time, it was my sister, our best friend Jess, my mom, and I. We all saw the creature besides my mom. She was in the kitchen grabbing the knives. I have a feeling she saw something due to her reaction when she ran into the house, scared out of her wits. When my sister ripped out the window fan, she at the same time was starting to slam shut the window, but for a moment it caught her off guard and she stopped what she was doing to try to wrap her mind around what she saw. She said before slamming that window shut, there was literally only the window screen between us and the dog man. I say it was a dog man because I could see the beginning of its ears on top of its head start to rise up till I couldn't see it anymore. Its head literally took up the mainly the whole window except for the top of the shoulders. It was darker than night, so I could see a slight curve of its shoulders and slope. The way it was swaying back and forth, side to side, that's what made the chills run straight down my spine and every hair stand on end. I'll never forget it. Sorry for the book I just wrote. I've never shared this encounter except a handful of childhood friends and my husband. But he's been friends with me since I was 15. He remembers certain details I told him about that night that I, could remember, that I couldn't remember. I feel my brain tried to block it out as much as possible to protect me from what my younger brain saw. I was told myself it was a Bigfoot, but knew it wasn't. I've even told my husband that I knew it wasn't a Bigfoot. He said when I was 15, I told him it sniffed the air, and I could see its canine snout and jowls. I don't remember saying this. He has one spectacular memory, thank the Lord. He said I told him that it wasn't a Bigfoot, it was tall enough to look through the fan through my mom's bedroom window, which would have made it close to eight feet tall because it was a ranch style home on one single floor, with the exception we had a basement with cellar doors in the back where her room was located. The house itself sat on a hill so on the front side of our home would have been like six and a half feet to look through the window. On the other side, you'd have to be eight foot plus to look through the window the way it did. Literally for the rest of the night, mom had us sit in our bedroom across the hall in a circle with our backs to each other, knives in our hands listening to every single sound. We lived in the middle of nowhere surrounded by fields and woods with the exception of sporadically placed houses here and there. The next morning, we looked outside for footprints or any disturbances, and we literally saw scratches on the window and two huge handprints on either side of the window and siding. On the siding in the dirt and dust, it was visibly elongated, almost like it had long fingers and slid them down an inch or two. As far as the scratches in the windows, I don't know what could have scratched a window like this and I wish I had pictures still to, to look at. I took them on an old wind-up camera and Lord knows where they are now, but I wanted to share that with you. We used to hear these extremely scary noises every night, literally like an alarm clock right at 8 p.m. every night come on time. 
It sounded like a mixture of a large animal snorting mixed with a baby crying and a woman screaming bloody murder. My mother never believed me, so I had this recorder called Girl Talk. Almost every kid, if you grew up in the 90s, had one of these. There was Girl Talk and Boy Talk. I had my Girl Talk ready at 8 p.m. to record it for my mom, and it came with sounds of the night. And I got it on tape, just like I knew I would. You should have seen the look on her face when I played this recording for her. She was shocked. I believe that was the day she realized we weren't the ones, we weren't the only ones out here besides the normal wild game like deer, rabbit, possum, bat. I recorded this before our encounter happened. We've had a lot of crazy instances happen at this house and around the property. There's another creepy encounter I had. My little sister and I saw something so disturbing we still can't explain it to this day. If you'd like to hear more about that, I'll write it down for you. Basically, if I remember correctly, she had wrote it down. Here's another one that I'm missing. Um, her and her sister would see this dog man in the trees um, when they were kids. And there was a, two or three of them in the trees watching their house. I will look for that encounter and uh, hopefully someday find it. It's making me mad that now that I'm going through state by state, I'm realizing that I'm missing some of these and I'm wondering where the heck they are. I'll probably find them when I um, do the world dogman encounters and uh, location unknown. So, all right, moving on. This next Pennsylvania subscriber submission is from the guy who shared uh, his Pine Barrens encounter with us and his photo of the hyena-like creature um, in his Pennsylvania residence. Jeff, I debated not sending this story to you as it's obviously not exactly cryptid related. In the past five weeks, I've had two encounters with something that I, can't, I can only identify as paranormal. Throughout my 44 years in life, I have had only close encounter with a cryptid and what appears to be one not so close encounter, but of which I have told you about. I can count on about one hand how many paranormal encounters I've had. For the record, I don't think cryptids are paranormal. Two of my paranormal experiences can be explained by a haunted house I lived in as a boy. In April of 2021, I settled into bed alone and did my three episode binge watch of one of my favorite shows on Amazon Prime. My wife had to be up at 5 in the morning the next day and decided to sleep in the guest room in order not to wake me up in the morning. At around 10 p.m., I shut off the TV and decided to close my eyes. Within a few minutes, I began hearing this random tapping noise every couple of seconds on what sounded to be the back of my flat screen TV. I live in a fairly old house and it's not uncommon for me to deal with mice every so often. So I became concerned that I had a stowaway in the wall behind the TV. Then I told myself that the TV had been on for a while, and the metal back on the TV must be shrinking slightly or warping a bit as the TV now was turned off and cooling down. So I decided to leave it be and go to sleep. The tapping continued for a few minutes and all of a sudden I was hit from the front by something and felt as if my body got hit by an electrical shock. I was lying on my back when it hit me. It felt as if a weak person was trying to hold my head and limbs down. I was admittedly confused, and then it told me it was going to take me over. It didn't speak, it simply revealed itself to me in kind of a telepathic way. The truth is that I knew right away that I could easily push this thing off, and to be honest, the attempt it made at pinning me down or possessing me felt strangely comfortable or good. I thought to myself that maybe I'd stop resisting and see what happens. Then my rational mind told me that might be kind of stupid. 
I started to say out loud, get off of me, but I could barely speak the words, and I remember them coming out very slow and slurred. At this point, I decided it was time to get this thing off of me, so I moved all four of my limbs at once and threw it off. I want to let you know that I've experienced sleep paralysis before, and this was not that. There was a type of half-assed paralysis, but more like someone was trying to hold me down. I could still move, it just took more effort than normal. The scary part, to be honest, was that it just hit me all at once, while I was still awake and not expecting it. I'm not religious, but I do pray daily. So, I said a few of my own personal prayers and went to sleep. After a week or so, I just figured it was not going to try that again, and I went back to my normal routine. Well, a few nights ago, I was in my bed again, alone. It was kind of a hot day, and my air conditioner wasn't working, so I had the fan on, the bed next to me blowing right on my head and shoulders. My wife got cold easily, and she decided to sleep in the guest room again to avoid the fan. I had just closed my eyes and started getting prepared to sleep. All of a sudden, I heard the fan start to struggle and slow down, then speed back up to normal. Then again, it started to struggle, only to speed back up to normal again. I lied there, thinking maybe my fan is about to crap it out on me. When it suddenly attacked me again. It was just like the last time, a total surprise. No communication this time, though, just the attack. Right away, I got angry and decided to pray out loud for this thing to get the hell off of me. And once again, my speech was slow and slurred. In fact, it actually hurt my throat to speak again. I remember thinking that it almost feels good and that I should just relax and experience whatever's going to happen. I quickly changed my mind and threw it off of me for a second time. This kind of thing is totally new to me. I can't recall ever having a spirit, ghost, or demon try to possess me or attack me before these two incidents. I'm not at all that scared as it is clearly not powerful enough to keep any kind of hold on me, but nonetheless I don't like to think that I can unexpectedly be attacked while I'm relaxing, ready to sleep. What is it? Why is it zeroing in on me? If it's this house, then why was it waiting two and a half years to start this? I'm tempted to set up an EMF reader, my Seek thermal cam, and maybe some kind of sound recording device in my room and then turn them on before lying down. I told my brother, my best friend, my wife, about what happened. My brother and friend believed me right away. But it's clear that my wife thinks I'm overreacting, and that's not what I think. So, yeah, that's my recent story. Let me know what you think it is, and I'll keep you in touch. Tonight's final Pennsylvania subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, I hope you are well. When I was younger, my mom started taking my brother and myself to church. I was in the second or third grade at this point, and I was excited to go. My mom had us baptized, and we never missed a Sunday. Now fast forward to middle school, it was time to start going to confirmation camp. Basically, a week-long camp where we'd have fun, and we took classes once a day. This camp is located in Pennsylvania, out past Dillsburg a ways. I remember all the apple orchards and how peaceful it seemed. My third and final year of being a camper, that all changed. I was 14 years old, if my memory serves me correct. Everything went smooth the first few days. One morning, I woke up wrapped in my blanket. I walked to the main cabin once everyone was assembled. They would quit blasting music to wake everyone up. After that, we would return to our cabins, get changed out of our PJs, and file down for breakfast. I got to the mess hall and poured my usual hot chocolate, waiting for everyone else to get there. Ten minutes later, I decided to check and see if the hot chocolate is drinkable temperature. I looked down, and there was a perfect six in the foam. I kind of froze for a second, just staring at it, not knowing what to make of it. I brushed it off after a few, thinking it was a fluke, but... In the back of my mind, it made me uneasy. Fast forward to midday, we would go swimming down at the lower camp at the bottom of the hill. 
Afterwards, we took showers. By this time, I had pushed the earlier incident out of my mind. So you can imagine my surprise when I looked down the middle of my shower and saw another perfect six in the soap bubbles. I was horrified and confused. I had no idea what was going on. The rest of the day passed very uneasily. I wasn't sure where or when or even if the next one would appear. Silly me worrying about a six. Before I tell you what happens next, I want to tell you about the cabins. They were built off the ground on concrete stilts, basically. Behind the cabins was a drop-off, so I had absolutely no explanation how this happened. It was dark at this point. We had just finished dinner, and my best friend and I popped back in so she could use the restroom before our activity hour. While I was waiting for her, I turned and found myself staring out the back window of the cabin. Immediately frozen in fear, I was staring into these glowing red eyes of a huge black dog. Walking towards me, there's no logical explanation for this, because as I said, the ground dropped off behind the cabin. When I heard the sink running, it broke my trance of fear long enough that I was able to walk to where I couldn't see it anymore. I didn't say a thing about it to my friend or anyone else. Everywhere I looked for the rest of the night, I'd see twisted demonic faces. Before bed, I had the counselor help to put the wooden window covers up, and that's how they stayed for the rest of that week. It didn't stop completely, but it put a dent in it. My second to last day, I was walking up to my cabin and noticed that halfway up the tree, there was a girl. She looked about 12 and she was hanging from the tree with a noose around her neck. She was a muddied gray, white, with transparent, wearing a nightgown from way back when. I stared at her for a while, afraid not knowing what to do until I finally until finally she vanished as quickly as she appeared. At this point, I was breaking down. I thought I was going crazy. When the day came for my mom to pick me up, I couldn't have been happier. I was more than ready to escape that place and the torment that it now had for me. I was home three days before it wasn't over, walking to my kitchen in the middle of the day, something caught my eye. I looked out the kitchen window and saw a shadow figure standing there staring at me, as if to tell me there's no escaping. After that, life kind of took a turn for the worse. My dad fell into addiction harder than he'd ever had before. When I was 18, my mom passed away due to complications of cancer she was fighting. I often wonder about just coincidences, or if that week of camp, and whatever may have attached itself to me, had a hand in it. All I know is that I try to live my life not looking over my shoulder. Thanks for taking your time to read this, Jeff. It feels good to get it off my chest. Well, there you have it, folks. This early morning or middle of the night bonus, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps the channel growing and going, and honestly, what gives people a chance and a place to share their experiences and theories judgment-free? Just treated with the respect we all deserve, thank you. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.